To be frank, I've not done much astronomy this year. I've had a couple of problems. We've had lots of cloud at night. And from my earlier vlog, which I did on solar astronomy, which I decided to start this year, it's been cloudy during the day. So apart from the one weekend when we had clear skies and I was able to do some solar imaging, my solar imaging hasn't progressed. So it's been a bit of a no-starter this year for astronomy for me. We're now in midsummer and 2021 is turning into quite a wet, damp, cloudy summer, which is not so surprising because the British Islands has a maritime climate. That is, it's set in the North Atlantic and we get these constant tracks of depressions coming in over the UK, bringing lots of warm, wet air from the Atlantic, which then bathes the island. I guess that's one of the things that makes the UK such a beautiful green place. So what does an astronomer do when it's cloudy all the time? Maybe I could have a solution for that. Maybe I do have a way of beating the clouds, but that will be a different project and the subject of a story for another day. On the other hand, that's going to take some time to come to fruition. So in the meantime, I've had a look at some 3D printing. I bought my son a Prusa Mini 3D printer for Christmas and he's had quite a bit of success. And I've had lots of demands relating to astronomy. So let me show you a couple of the projects that he's helped me with over the last six months. Not that I've managed to use them very much. The first one, of course, is the solar finder that I might actually demonstrate in my solar imaging video earlier in the year. This has been really successful. It was the first project that he did for me and he's improved quite a lot since then. Some of the challenges with the Prusa Mini were getting the feed correct, getting the temperature right and stopping the 3D printing curling up off the bed. Those of you with 3D printers will probably know what we mean when we talk about that. This was printed in two pieces with a couple of plastic washers and I've added some springs to make it adjustable and this has been really successful and I think this was a design that he picked up on Thingiverse. The second project was a cable protector for my ZWO ASI 120mm. Those of you who've had these cameras may have had the same fate that I suffered from when I was on a wild weekend down in the Isle of Wight in the days when we could still have star parties before lockdown. I managed to smash the connector on the ZWO which was sent off to China, fixed and now I have it back fully working, fully repaired. I was doing a moon mosaic project a little while ago, but that's been put on hold because of all the cloud. Uh, but this works really successfully in protecting the cable. If it gets knocked, it doesn't break off. I really like this. Uh, I've got the idea from some cable protectors that we had in the office where someone knocks the RJ45 cable and it causes damage to the connectors or the sockets in the wall. So this is an adaption of that design. And I've also seen some similar ones on the internet, to be honest, uh, but it's really pretty neat. What to do when you lose a lens cap from an eyepiece, or in this case, a Barlow lens. And this was a rather specialist one because it's really a bung that goes in and there's a keyway on the edge and I needed something to protect the lens. So my son basically printed this cap up, as you can see here, and that just goes in, tightens in, and my Barlow lens is nice and secure. And most spectacularly of all is this. What is it, may you ask? This is a device. You put your mobile phone in here, and it can go on the end of an eyepiece, and it enables you to take photographs through the telescope which you might think is a bit lame for those people who've got specialist astronomy cameras, but actually can be quite good for outreach. When we get around to do outreach again, I was kind of thinking I could set my telescope up, put this on, and then people can use their own phones to take photographs through the eyepiece of my telescope. I thought that was really neat. It's got a couple of different adjusters, and he's printed it in orange as well as the gray, and it was produced, or the design basically came out of someone's PhD thesis uh, called Open Ocular 
and I think they're looking at commercializing some of these but this is kind of an open source design which I have to say is really really neat I do really like this so there's just a few ideas of what astronomers can do when it's too cloudy to do astronomy and you don't have a radio telescope yet I think you're only limited by your imagination and the capability of your 3D printing. So wishing you all clear skies at some point this year, maybe we'll have to wait till the autumn now, and good luck 3D printing. If you've enjoyed this vlog, please consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like. The clear sky gods will thank you.